Elon Musk, pleasure to have you on. Thanks for having me. So this is the dragon that, that yes. goes up uh, into space and is going to go up on Monday, correct? Yeah, that's our Dragon spacecraft, uh, or version one, which is capable of taking cargo to and from the space station, including uh, bi biological cargo, like you know, fish and mice and that kind of thing. So when do, when do human beings uh, start going up in it, do you think? So we expect to complete version two of Dragon, which will have astronaut transport capability uh, in about two years. Most of what you do now is, is send uh, satellites uh, up into space, right? That's yeah. how you pay the bills. Exactly. But you want to do something much more ambitious with SpaceX. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, the long-term aspiration is to develop the technologies necessary to transport a large number of people and cargo to, to Mars um, in order to create a self-sustaining civilization there. And that's really why I started the company, was because it, it seemed to as though... Create, to create the possibility for life on other planets. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it, it, it sort of started off when I was uh, thinking about what to do after PayPal. And I was, I'd always been interested in space, but I didn't think there was anything that an individual could do in space. I mean, it seemed like the province of large governments. Um, and, uh, but but I, I sort of started looking into it, and, and I went to the NASA website to, to say to find out when we're going to Mars. <laughs> it seems like, obviously, that is the next thing after the moon. Um, and I couldn't find anything. Um, so I was like, wow, what's, this just seems very strange. Initially, I was under the impression that, that, it was a, that we'd lost the will to do that. Um, and I, and I late, later came to the conclusion that I was quite wrong about that. I think the, the United States in particular is a nation of explorers. And do you, do you look at it as, uh, why did you decide transport was the most important thing? I mean, I think we would, oh, would uh, regard, would regard yeah. living on Mars as... No, that's, that's the relatively easier, really? easier thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> so we could live on Mars, just getting there is the problem. Yes. Like getting, I mean, right now, getting to Mars is impossible. So, like, it's kind of, doesn't matter what, uh, you know, what you do when you got, when you, what, what you do when you get there, if you can't get there. Um, so the first order of business is to figure out how to, how to get there. And it needs to be uh, in a way that uh, uh, enables large numbers of people and cargo. It can't just be like a handful of people, because that's obviously not going to create a self-sustaining civilization. You know, um, and Apollo was an amazing, inspiring thing for all of humanity. But, but the last time we went to the moon was like 1973 or 4, I believe. So we don't want to just have flags and footprints for and, and then never go to Mars again. If we just have one mission, that, 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 that will also be a, a super inspiring thing, but it's not going to fundamentally change the future uh, of, of, of humanity. So you have this grasshopper rocket, which, which uh, unlike most rockets, which, which, can't, you know, which are, are yes. not reusable, this one gently comes back down in a kind of vertical land. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you can see the videos of this on the SpaceX website. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the fundamental breakthrough, going back to the, the, the point of uh, that, that, that developing a Mars transportation system, it has to be uh, affordable to go. Like, it can't just be like billions of dollars per person to go to Mars. Then that, you, you just no way you could establish a, a base on Mars at, at that cost. So we have to develop uh, rockets that are rapidly uh, and as close to completely reusable as possible. Um, uh, as an example, the, the Falcon 9 costs about $60 million. Uh, I mean, it's sort of like a jet, you know, it's like, uh, but the cost of the, of the propellant is only about $200,000. So it's just like, you can imagine how expensive it would be if you had to buy a new plane every time you went somewhere. Uh, very few people would fly. Uh, but refueling a plane is pretty easy. We once talked about uh, airplane travel, and I, I asked you why it is that with all this technological improvement over the last 30 or 40 years, the one thing that doesn't seem to have improved, and it is in the domain of the private sector, yeah. sort of, is jet yeah, travel. Sure, I mean, absolutely. if you're flying from New York to London, it takes about as long as it took 40 or 50 years ago. In fact, it takes lo longer. It, it, actually, because that, this is a, it actually does take longer because uh, I mean, the 7 8, uh, the, like my, my favorite sort of commercial air, airliner is the 747 because it actually goes quite fast. And it's actually incredible that that, that thing was... I mean, the first iteration of it was, was designed in the 60s. Um, I mean, since then, I, I don't think we've exceeded the, 7, the 747, Why? which is nutty. Um, well, uh, it, for the commercial airliner business, you essentially have a, a duopoly between Airbus and Boeing. And uh, these big airplane programs are 
really long term and they're quite expensive. And I think if you're in the senior management of one of those companies, it's 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 a, a safer bet to take an, to just aim for a little incremental improvement than to try to aim for a radical improvement. Because generally, if you if you aim for a radical improvement and you're wrong, you'll you'll get fired. Why doesn't SpaceX create the fast the fastest jet plane in the world? I, we, we've got to focus on rockets. When do you think you'll be able to uh, achieve the aspiration of SpaceX of actually moving people to a place like Mars? Well, I, I think we could probably send the first person in about 12 years. Wow. Will you be that person? Only if I'm confident that SpaceX will be fine if I die. That's, you know, if, if I was, maybe if I, was, if I was confident that the mission would continue if, if, if I wasn't around, then I would do it. You've heard all the, the no, press yeah. about Tesla. So Trust let me, me first give you a chance to get it off your chest. <laughs> I mean, like pistol whipped. <laughs> Three cars caught yeah. on fire. What's your response? So um, the, the amount of na national and international news headlines dedicated to three Tesla fires that caused no injury um, is, is greater than all of the gasoline fires that occurred in the, in the United States. And, the, and with and, all the other cars. Yeah, w w which uh, from mid last year to today is about a quarter million gasoline car fires, which caused about 400 deaths, something like 1,200 serious uh, injuries. Our three non injurious fires got more national headlines than a quarter million deadly gasoline car fires. That's mad. What the heck is going on? I mean, I realize like a new technology should, uh, does, should have a spotlight on it, but it shouldn't have a laser on it. <laughs> yeah. So when you look at Tesla, the big uh, concern many people have is scale. You're, you're producing about 30,000 cars a year, but Toyota is producing, I oh, don't yeah, know, we're, you know, we're minuscule. We're millions. So, I mean, yeah, we get, and like, yet, way too much attention, good and yet or your, bad. And I your mean, market like, cap is almost as high as some of these car, these car companies. Well, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's gotten what less in about? recent weeks, but, yeah. <laughs> what, what, it's, what it's, do, you, do you think it's crazy, or do you think it's, a, it's an appropriate uh, indication of future growth? Yeah. I mean, what I've, you know, what I've actually said on more than one occasion is that, that I, I thought our valuation was more than we had any right to deserve, um, that we would do our best uh, to, to fulfill those value expectations, and that I thought, I thought over time, the value of Tesla would probably significantly exceed uh, where, where it is today, or even where it was at a relatively high point a few weeks ago. Uh, but but it, it would be, I think, silly for me to assert that Tesla is unequivocally worth, you know, at one point we were like worth $22 billion, and we'll have you know, somewhere over $2 billion in sales this year. Um, that, that is an enormous amount of credit for, for future execution. The, the heart of what interests you about Tesla, at least as I recall when we've talked, is that it's not a compromise, that, that a hybrid is, a, is something of a compromise between yeah. an internal combustion engine and a, and a battery-powered engine. And, and exactly. here you can do it cleanly. But batteries just aren't that powerful enough, for, and they don't seem to improve enough well, to imagine yeah. a world powered by batteries, right? I, I, I certainly can see that, and in fact, my uh, opinion is that uh, all transportation, with the ironic exception of rockets, um, will be fully electric. Um, Even planes? Yes, everything. When? Planes, trains. By, by when? Everything. It'll never be like a 100% conversion. Like, we still have some steam engines right. running around, right. you know, and uh, some people still ride horses. Um, but it's a pretty tiny percentage. So I think it'll be the same with gasoline. I think in the future, people will look back on the gasoline era the way that we look back on the steam era today. So you're using battery technology. You're, 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 de you're doing Tesla, which is an electric car. You have solar panel. Uh, you have an interest in, in, in business in solar panels. Yeah. Uh, do you think solar energy is the future? I think it's super obviously the future, absolutely. Um, in fact, uh, it, it, I mean, if you think about it, the, the world is almost entirely solar powered already in that we would be a frozen ice ball at about three or four degrees Kelvin uh, or you know close to absolute zero without the sun and the sun powers our entire system of precipitation uh, the uh, the ecosystem and is, the agriculture yeah apart from a tiny number of exceptions uh, almost all life is solar powered
All right, another great technology you've talked about that most people think of as out of a movie. Explain how it would work. Let's say it's it's New York to Boston or LA to San Francisco. Uh, I get into a uh, a tube, and it's almost like air hockey. The way it works is I strap myself into a seat and. Well, it's um, it, it would actually feel, uh, maybe like uh, like the Space Mountain ride um, at Disney World. Um, and the, the G-loading would actually be less than, than what people experience at Space Mountain. So if you can handle Space Mountain at Disneyland, you, can handle, you should be able to handle the, the, the Hyperloop. Um, it'll feel super smooth because, uh, as, as you mentioned, it's, it, it would use uh, air skis, like, like an air hockey table, but with the, the air jets on the, on the pod side as opposed to the, the tube side. Um, so it, it would just be, it, I mean, it would be smooth as glass. Um, Ten years from now, what will car travel look like in, in America? Ten years from now? Um, I think there's going to be a lot of electric cars on the road. Uh, well, way, certainly faster more than there are now. Um, Driverless cars? I, I, think, I think we'll be at, in, in the steep portion of the uh, adoption of electric cars in, in ten years. You think hybrids are a transition that will oh, fade absolutely. away? absolutely. Yeah. They're like, they're like a sort of an amphibian. You know? I mean, there's, there was a role for amphibians when life was moving from the oceans to land, but, it's, but, but in the end, very few amphibians remained. It's a good, good point to end on. Thank you.